So recently I was asked to uh, provide um, the bulk influx quantity for um, for a site I'm working on in uh, in the UK, um, and it involves um, 26 um, structures in uh, over a sort of a 20 hectare site, um, which is uh, quite large um, for uh, for London, and. Um, the complicated nature of this site is that it includes um, it includes basements, it includes um, uh, allowance for um, pile mats and um, pile caps, and um, and different depths of material. Um, and when I took over the site, um, it was um, only done in um, PDS, and um, PDS only sort of provided a um, a finished surface um, quantity. Um, I mean, we did. They did uh, box out um, to allow for the formation, um, and this involved sort of creating, you know, more break lines um, for each for each for each block. And um, recently, the volumes uh, had actually uh, ex uh, risen quite uh, substantially because of. Um, because of the basements, and uh, the the question I was given was, um, what can we do about it? Uh, so I thought I'd uh, run run through um, what I did. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about uh, CAD polygons in 12D. We're going to talk about tins, super tins, and we're going to talk about uh, volumes, volumes analysis, of, and depth range polygons. So just before I start, I'll just give you a very quick rundown of the site. Um, it's the the former Pill Centre site in, up in Colondale in the U in, in London, and it's basically been operated by the Metropolitan Police Force, and they're sort of downsizing um, the site, and it's been sold off. Uh, and basically, there's a you know, I mean, existing sports grounds, um, some existing high-rise buildings, um, some basement existing basements, some car parks, some other structures that have been demolished and. It's been replaced with uh, 26 or so multi-use residential commercial buildings and a school, um, uh, and it's yeah, it's quite large for, for London. So when I came onto the project, um, phase one had already been issued for construction, um, and this sort of included um, this road, this loop road up until um, this boundary. Um, blocks U, blocks T, blocks R and S are currently being constructed um, on site. Um, and we're moving towards uh, block P and Q. So in order to get uh, the volumes, I, I, I had already modelled the entire site um, a, again, um, regardless of what was done previously in PDS. Um, and this included, you know, I mean, all your curbs, um, all the blocks, all to a finished um, walking level. And to, to, get, um, to get accurate uh, earthwork quantities or bulk earthwork quantities, we needed to make allowance for obviously the uh, basement and the basement substructure, which includes you know your slabs, your pile caps, um, your piles, and also the uh, we had to allow for the attenuation tanks that are sort of being placed in almost on almost every one of these blocks. Um, we had to um, allow for you know, I mean the the road build up. Um, footway build up um, and obviously landscaping being being uh, no build up um, so to, to, to move beyond a finished surface in, in, in most other packages is quite a, a quite a labor intensive exercise um, but in 12d it's it's relatively straightforward so in order to get the, uh, the uh, volumes I um, I broke I broke down the site into um, into areas. Um, I'll just show you what I did, and basically what I've done is I've drawn um, polygons, etc., on um, for different uh, surfaces. So, for the red, for example, that is um, a suspended slab. So that's obviously um, your piling mat, your formation level, your piling mat. Your, your your concrete slab and obviously if obviously your floor finishes um, we had the the blue uh, was asphalt 
Um, we had junction tables, which were a little bit deeper. Um, we had footways, which were which were 300 mil um, deep. We had um, we had uh, permeable paving, which were which was um, 730 deep, I think. We had landscaping that was zero depth, um, and I basically did this for um, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Um, and to give you an idea of um, the site, um, there the polygons um, over the entire site. So, in order to to calculate volumes, I needed uh, surfaces. Um, so basically, what I did was I translated um, the tin multiple times um, and nulled it by the polygons, um, and then basically dropped it by depth. So. Um, in order for, for me to do that, uh, I'll just quickly quickly show you. Um, I went down to tins, um, translate, copy, and basically what I did is I grabbed my finished surface, and knowing um, the depth of of these uh, materials, I would drop that material. Yeah, I drop that material. Um, so, for example, this suspender slab here. Let's just do it again. I was dropping the suspender slab by 730 mil, and basically, what I was doing is I was dropping the whole tin, a whole site-wide tin, by 730 mil. In process, and when I was to show you those tins, that tin. The, Currently, it's 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 basically site wide, um, and basically, I need to know um, the tin by just these red polygons. So to do that, I went to tins null polygons, and by going to nulling that xx outside of all these red polygons, when I hit the red and hit set I've created tins just for those um, buildings um, and which would be which would be 730 mil lower than the finished surface I then basically did that for all of the materials so I'll just turn them all on um, phase one And now, if I was to take a section through, to give you an idea of what what I've done, let's just turn everything off for a sec. So turn on the finished surface. So this is this brown line. I've got some options on there as well, which are a bit confusing. Um, I then turn on my depth polygons, are the ones that are dropped. Uh, which are these these ones here? And you can see that I've got tins that are sort of going up and down. Um, Along the site, that's the existing. That's the, the that's the, the park. That's the footway, 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 footway. So in 12D we have uh, super tins, which are great, which are basically a combination of um, of different tins. So basically, what I did then was created a super tin using all of those um, all of those drop surfaces, um, and that's pretty straightforward. You create super tin. Um, I've already created it, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you um, the tin that I created, and basically this is just made up of um, all of those surfaces that I dropped. So now, if I was to turn on that super tin, 
Uh, let's turn it on. You'll see it's a, a sort of a boxed out um, layer now that follows um, the finished surface. I then wanted to create volumes, um, get volumes. So volumes is pretty straightforward. Um, I went down to, to design volumes exact tin to tin. Um, I then you grab my existing surface. I grabbed the super tin that was created. I used a depth color range um, and basically I created a created a report. Um, so when I turn on my faces, uh, I'll just turn them back on. Sorry, I'm using my laptop, it's a little bit slow. So uh, the, the funny thing was when I issued the uh, volumes, they were a little bit uh, taken aback um, when I found out um, it was about uh, uh, 10 or 11 million pounds worth of cut that's being carted away um, and it had gone up because of the accuracy um, by about 40 or 40, 45 or 50,000 cubes um, more than what they had in the planning stage. Uh, I was then asked um, to uh, holistically look at the site, um, seeing what was constrained, what was not, um, and recommend um, lifts to the site um, to sort of try to balance uh, the volumes as much as possible. Um, and using 12D and the uh, and the same sort of s techniques that I just showed you showed you there, um, relatively quickly um, we got the uh, options down to uh, we got option one down. Sorry. Option one down to about 109,000 cubes a cut, um, which is what a half saving or five million pounds saving. Um, we we sort of included some retaining um, along some of the structures. Um, we lifted up some of the basements a little bit, and we got it down to about 65,000 cut. And then um, option three, which was trying to maintain as much as the, much of the road that was constructed um, already, um, we got a it's gone back up a little bit to about 118,000. So I reckon in, in the final, um, the final design, it'll probably be somewhere in the in the range of 65 to uh, to 100,000 cubes of cut um, that will be um, saved um, using uh, 12D. And finally, the the next question that that was asked was um, was uh, the logistics of the dirt, moving the dirt around. Um, uh, in order to assess the options, uh, being a live site and all, they wanted to know um, where, how big the stockpiles were going to be as they were constructing it, and what was what could be constructed um, with the dirt that was available. Um, and in order to do that, um, we had to um, to to break down the volumes um, for each option um, even more so, uh, and break it down into different polygons and. Uh, different areas and and uh, to do that in 12d it's a it's uh, once again a very very easy process um, in the um, the volumes 10 to 10 there's a an option there to use model of poly polygons and basically I created um, polygons using the CAD polygons command um, for different sequencing um, and I gave each one a name um, and when you hit uh, the volumes uh, in, in this instance, it creates um, a breakdown of volumes by by area. So those numbers were fed into the to the spreadsheet. A um, little bit of little bit of mucking around, but uh, we uh, successfully um, did in essence a mass haul um, and potentially saved the client somewhere in the range of five to to seven million pounds.